During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk a little about grass waterways. You know, when the crops are off the field and you can actually see across that landscape through many fields, you're going to see a grass strip running through a valley or running through some low areas of the field. And you may be wondering, what is the purpose of those grass strips? There are actually several purposes and all are positive for farmers. Well, I don't know about all are positive. The number one negative thing I always look at is cost. It does cost something to seed it, it costs something to maintain it, and then of course there's cost because you don't get any income off it usually. Now there are some farmers who will bale up the grass, but let's talk about those benefits other than potentially baling up the grass. It's really for great big rain events, and the purpose is to slow the water down and then catch any soil that may have come off the field, so at least that soil ends up staying in your field rather than ending up down in the river somewhere. When you think about fields with rolling hills, those hills just really funnel all that water down into a valley. And when you get a big one, like Brian said, where you get several inches all at once, or if that ground is completely full of water already, so it couldn't soak in anymore, that water is going to come and it's going to come fast raging down through the field. We see soil erosion as just a huge issue and for farmers we don't like it because that's our topsoil and our topsoil is really valuable and takes forever to rebuild. So we want to protect that topsoil as much as we can. So Brian said there is a cost to maintaining and having a grass waterway. He's right. But in my mind, the benefit of catching any topsoil before it leaves our field is really valuable to us. Well, yeah, it is, but let's face it, it really didn't stop the erosion. All it did is caught the erosion, so it didn't leave the field. Well, in our case, we have a couple of watershed dams on our farm, so the dirt's going to probably end up behind that dam, so we could always go recover the dirt there, bring it back to the field. And my whole point here is, you know, these waterway things have changed over the years, in part because because of the size of farm equipment. We used to do lots of tillage, we don't today, but even when we do now, it's just great big stuff. We have great big sprayers, great big planters. It's hard to maintain that waterway when it's at an angle running through your field. And then the next thing is, we've gone to a lot of strip till, for example, and a lot of farmers have gone to no-till. Well, that reduces the need for that grass waterway, so there are some people that have taken grass waterways out, and it's turned out fine. In other cases, the grass waterways have come out, and you can really see vast alleys just getting cut through there, uh, that's really not the best and that's where you go, yeah, probably should have thrown that water way back in. Well, we talk about it so often in farming that we can't just approach things with one effective mode of action. And in this case, when we're talking about preventing erosion, yes, the reduction in tillage has been great. Different methods that farmers are using to put fertility out there rather than having to incorporate them in. Different ways to control weeds and so forth. That's all led to less erosion. Having those grass waterways in there too is still a good idea and gives you that backup plan for, hey, I've already done the reduction in tillage. I've got the grass waterway too. I'm doing everything I can. Whether you have grass waterways or not, you've got to get your weeds under control. We'll talk about stopping this tough weed later in the show.